But uh, so first, uh, hello everyone. Welcome to this session of a smart contract gladiator. That uh, right now we are at the uh, beginning for building the arena. That in future, I hope it would be the near future. We will see some bloody transaction that some smart contract they are fighting over UTXO and uh, there will be people around it and uh, they will vote and uh, if you, maybe you guys know about this gladiator and all of stuff that there is a caesar and he's uh by he's up voting or down voting which we saw from the crowd that uh gladiator that was defeated will you know his fate will be decided so this is this was the uh, base idea but to, in order to create this RNA, this uh, system, we have to uh, build a lot of stuff. So we will reach to that uh, level of uh, uh, not just the RNA, but the flexibility that, that we can add different uh, smart contract and people can uh, showcase their uh, talents, their codes, their best practices, their uh, like one a smart contract can be winner based on the fee. We can decide that, that uh, if a smart contract uh, has spent a fee, for example, less than 300,000 loveless, then that a smart contract can consume this UTXO. So that would be a threshold and we are going to do that. But uh, again, at the end, we want to go for voting as well. So we want to, and also you might, you might wonder why the voting, because this is again a building block for an absolute complete unchained system of voting. So if you think about any political system, let's say it's a democracy or it's, uh, it is a dictatorship, parliament uh, system, semi-parliament, like uh, we, what we have in uh, with the US like electoral college and all this system at their core, they have some voting and e even the dictatorship, they have some council like the uh, like council of fascists or someone like, like they have some again voting, but they, these voting have power. And we can't decide on that. And uh, I'm going to, uh, we are going to together to implement these and we will explore these and we will decide that in the fate of a blockchain like Cardano, what kind of system would be not only better, faster, cheaper, but would be fair and it would be less prone to corruption and less prone to uh, power of uh, maybe wealth. But maybe, maybe we will decide on, you know, okay, capitalist is the best system, at least for, uh, as we call, if we call it a political system, but not uh, economic uh, system. That uh, That's a thing. I mean, if someone has the highest ADA, that, that's a guy who should decide about uh, which uh, gladiator, which a sport contract must be in, in, in place, like which, uh, a smart contract must spend or meet or certify or whatever. Okay, we will decide on that. We will explore that. We will see its issues. And again, there are some power inside blockchain, like the power on wallets, power of a UTXO, power over some uh, parameters. Like there are some things uh, hard coded inside a smart contract, and we cannot change that. So how, how do we deal that? Let, let, let's say, for example, there was a DAO. They decided to put something inside their smart contract. And now it's five years later, and well, that just stopped them. That they, that destroyed that DAO because they cannot move uh, above that or beyond that. So uh, all these things we need to, uh, if we want to explore this, we need to. Uh, start with some building blocks. And one of the building blocks that I, I'm i uh, working on it uh, is a, a system of a smart contract that uh, control uh, these uh, other smart contract. And by controlling, I mean validation. So 
again, one of the things, this is my personal uh, opinion, is uh, as, as we all know and we heard it, do not trust, verify. So now we heard this idea of code is law. Fine, code is law. But again, we don't want to trust that law. We don't want to trust that code. We want to verify it. So how do we do that? How do we make sure that that code, even though we don't know, because uh, maybe you know that in Plutus, if you look at the, let's say, let me show you uh, an example of Plutus core. If, if I have here, I don't know. I don't think I have here, but if you, if you know that there, the Plutus core is not that much clear, really. Let me see that. that do I have an example of Plutus core so I can show you how does it look like? Uh, this, I think, data core. Yeah. There is a report, by the way, uh, we can, you guys can check this through that uh, we are going to use this uh, idea for creation of. Uh, uh, a water system that would be the, the basic one, which is the tug of war. So it would be like 12 people voting and there is a threshold. And if the voting pass to that, then something happened. As I said, for example, a small contract is uh, uh, able to um, mint something or to burn something or to consume something or to produce something. And we, we are going to see that. So again, as I said, these unchained uh, uh, events will have uh, unchained uh, consequences. So uh, we, we're going to see that, but I'm going to show you, this is the Plutus score. If you can, guys can see me, can see my uh, screen. Uh, this is Plutus score. And maybe this is pure, pure by the way, this is purify. Uh, this is the, if you want to go the actual untied Plutus score, this is the guy. So if you can see from my right side, that's really big one, and it will com uh, convert to uh, Seaborg core, which will be, for example, in case of this draw contract, it would be this. So what if there is a contract, the code is uh, not available, or even the code is available, but we don't know I mean, uh, what's going on with it. Even the code is, here it is, it would be really hard to understand. And then again, this might happen that, oh, you have to trust. No, let's not go with the trust. Let's go with uh, verification. Let's go with that. So how do we do that? Well, uh, in a project that I'm working, we had, uh, uh, I, there is a, as you, maybe you guys know, there is a app wallet in Mesh, which is a wallet that's, been handled by the app itself. So it's a wallet you give to a bot, we give a robot and it will handle the transaction that you will, based on all the condition, programmatically will handle that. Like it can witness a transaction, do something, you know, any, any as any normal uh, wallet can do something that app wallet is going to do. So. We took this idea, uh, we start to build admin by it. So what do I, what do I mean that? So let's say again, that's again, that idea of uh, trust. One of the things that you guys have seen many times in Ethereum or other blockchain, but it is happening in Cardano that uh, you are going to lose your custody of a uh, fund in order to gain something within a DAP or exchange or liquidity pool or whatever. So again, trust us, we are a good guys, we are something this, 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 give us all your fund and we will give you this percent annually based on uh, what you gave us. And okay, that, that's a model and it's up to you that you want to do that, but you will lose your custody of funds and therefore, Maybe in very radical idea like in Bitcoin, uh, that's uh, that's against the core fundamental concept of blockchain because you don't you, you should not be you should not lose your custody of uh, whatever you have. So you have to be responsible. Okay, there are things happen, but you have to be self-organized and self-governed. So, but you should not 
again, trust need to verify and so on. So by the design that we were thinking that we have some escrow contract, we didn't want to go with uh, custody uh, stuff like, hey, just send us uh, your money to this smart contract. Let's say this is escrow and uh, we will keep it safe for you. And uh, then you go find a buyer or seller or whatever you want to, to do with that fund. And then uh, we will give that fund to that person. Well, again, that's a custodial. If something happened, even for a DAP would be very uh, disastrous that they lost their fund. This could get hacks. So one of the things is design a contract that is non-custodial, simple as this. So how do we, so how, how we can make sure things are correct? By the uh, implementation of something like App Wallet, and let's call it admin. And here in the things that we are going to explore in the session today, we are going to create, and I'm going to show you the example of this access control and this uh, based on the project that I'm working, but this will be same and uh, I'm working, I will write it, this code down and then we'll explore it more. But one of the things that especially I wanted to discuss this system for this system and this design pattern with you is to find its loophole, to find its issue. And maybe you don't want to agree. You say, hey, you're telling very nice and uh, buzzwords, uh, but it is not applicable. You know, you know, you have to be naive to believe this works or something. Yeah, that, that's completely okay. Feel free to you know jump in and you know slap me on face. No, no problem. <laughs> so uh, the idea is we have a contract which is a spending contract called access control, and this 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 is designed based on the. By the way, maybe you guys. I already know my background is in cybersecurity. And I, in cybersecurity, I was malware analyzer and uh, uh, penetration tester, most, mostly on red team, so in organization. But uh, in some uh, occasion, we were designing this uh, system of authentication and authorization in a company. And uh, well, you might see there are some ID cards and people go and show it in somewhere and so they will get access to certain floor, certain room or whatever. But uh, there are ways to make this programmatically. So if someone, for example, sit behind a computer and let's say that computer belongs to a secretary, belong to a person with another department, but by uh, entering his password, his username, everything he is, it is inside his computer in another department will uh, magically come to this uh, computer. He works on it. And then after logging out, it will get uh, you know destroyed and it will get again saved to that uh, cloud or to that computer. So this very simple idea of control and access. That's how, how, do, how do you do that in the uh, computer security and a network security. So I took that idea and trying to implement it here. And uh, we are going to explore some of some new idea as well that uh, uh, <laughs> that would be really interesting and I want your insight. About. So the access control guy is going to designate other contracts such as gatekeeper, what minter, which, as I said, again, that we are going to use at least for this system, and we will test other system as well, that we are going to use uh, minting and burning as a means for what. So let's say that if someone mint, it means yes. If if you uh, burn that vote, it means no, at least for the system that we are working. But sure, we can explore uh, all this idea. We can use even data to increment, decrement the stuff and so on. But, so, but for, just uh, bear with me for a starting. We are going to use that. So yes means vote. It was minted and there, that's a currency symbol and the token and everything we will see also that how this votes, uh, vote token is going to be 
uh, recognized on blockchain. And then if someone comes and say, uh, I do not disagree with proposal or whatever system or whatever happening here, I'm going to burn this token. But again, we are made to show that one person, one vote. So you know, how do we do that? And, you know, updating the state and so on. And we will uh, uh, discover that. And again, this is based on that the whole uh, stuff. So the gatekeeper would be the contract that's going to validate other contract in the in one arena. One of the contract would be vote minter, which is a minting policy contract. And uh, let's say we have two gladiator, a small contract, two of them, both of them are a spending contracts, you know, because they are going to use uh, the incoming inputs, their UTXO, and they are going to consume it and produce something based on the condition that uh, this specific RNA has. So again, uh, you might say, well, again, another use case of this, since we are having RNA one, RNA two, gatekeeper. You might see you might see this idea of uh, domain specific DAO. So in the DAO we have different spaces. There is community, there is treasury, there is front end, back end. There, there are many many domain can be uh, inside a DAO, and each of them should work with each other. But if something happened to one specific domain, it should not uh, affect other domain. And you might say, okay, there are other systems too. Sure, we can uh, explore that. But uh, at least to my uh, uh, research, what I found that uh, the domain-specific DAO is for now the best form of DAO that survives against all, all, all sort of uh, attack, not just civil attack, but uh, propaganda attack or uh, like a fault, because still there are also DAO that they are very vulnerable to thought or FOMO or this concept in crypto that's, you know, fear, uncertainty and doubt or fear of missing out. All these, uh, they are still uh, vulnerable, like fake news. Uh, how, how we can protect a DAO against fake news, like another DAO. I'm sure we, will, we have now blockchain wars, Ethereum, Cardano, you know, Bitcoins fighting each other, but eventually we will see a DAO war or something around that. It, it, it is not a war of war, but something, but we have seen that in uh, browser war at 90s, and eventually we reach to a level that let's create a standardization and let's uh, uh, work on that. And see, after that standardization, we had the boom of 2000, you know, all this amazing stuff with a browser and internet happen after this uh, so uh, you are going to design that DAO and you have to make it uh, versatile or at least it, it's uh, strong enough that if something goes wrong the whole DAO doesn't clap so it would be I think I would suggest that let's go with dominant specific so uh, let's consider this a domain let's consider the domain or a DAO Let's consider right now is the RNA one, which has its own separate rule, own condition. Everything is, uh, is specific to itself, uh, but they are part of a uh, bigger system, which is the that a smart contract gladiator session or whatever the name, which the access control is going to control it. And you might say, well, who's going to control the access control? That's a very philosophical, philosophical question, and we can now explore that. Right now, I've uh, uh, created something called uh, Guardian contract, which is a minting contract. Guardian council. Council, is it? I know it's the spelling is wrong, I know, sorry. I think it was constant. Um, uh, <laughs> so, uh, Guardian Council, yeah. Um, yeah, God, okay, sorry. Let me copy from our friend A and. So, the Guardian, oh, so what does it mean? 
the, what what this contract is going to do. This contract is going to designate access control. It's going to specify this is the access control. This is the gatekeeper, and it will tell to the access control that what are the gatekeeper. So access control, which will be uh, handled by another app wallet, another because we we are we want to go with you know as as much as possible programmatically. And if you think about the front end and creating something above uh, above this system, which uh, to today at least in this particular session we are we will focus on only the uh, Pluto's codes you know, maybe off chain but in the off chain in manner of testing the codes and you know interacting with the blockchain not going with any off chain Haskell at least there are some off chain but it's not uh, complicated as like other if you, you've seen it uh, but uh, the idea is let's create a core and then you can you have the whole world of creating the front end for whatever it is. So uh, this access control is going, uh, this guardian console, which is again minting contract, is going to produce some data. So let me show the code and we can talk about it. The code would be better. So uh, in the file called uh, I have access control types, I defined some uh, data, data for access control. That's going, that the guardian contract, which is uh, let me if I can let, let me show you the guardian contract, which I call it uh, a cat access control authentication token minting policy. Yeah, that's so I just summarize it. But uh, uh, the parameter, if you look at the type of that, there is a guardian console popkey hash, which is a list of popkey hash. And the only thing that you might see in this contract is because you know we have we want to have full uh, control. This is kind of like let's say not guardian console. Let's let let's call it electoral college, or let's let, let's call it. Uh, dictators or something. You see that this governance again is coming. It would be just for designating access control, which we are going to see that inside that it's datum, there will be a lot, all the information about the whole domain and everything. So that access control will, uh, that its contract will decide based on that. It is this function that uh, all of the member of Guardian Council, Popkey Hash, must sign and that function let me zoom a little bit is uh that uh it's you know it's haskell it's self-exploratory that's all of the but by the way there there, there is something like let's say that like, like, it is like this pkh this guy would be like a pkh uh but this error for me is just you know let's say avoid it let's summarize it so but uh that's the thing. So there is an anonymous function. It will take one PKH at a time from the list of uh, Guardian Console popkey hash and check it with this uh, guy that does this popkey hash exist in TX info signatory or not. So we do not use a TX sign by, and this is the kind of function to just check everything on the one. Uh, uh, list is existing another list or so or uh, not, and then uh, the function that check is all. So every uh, every time that popkey hash is going to check with this guy, this TX info signatories must return true, otherwise this bad. But for burning that for which means that like rework the access control, we just uh, use any. So any of these guys sign it, any of these return through would enough. Should we go with this? We can, we'll decide on it. Let's uh, decide on that. But uh, this guy, this access control, I maybe it's, you see this very, uh, sorry, this access control authentication tool is very simple. There is nothing because I wanted to show that it, it has like full control. 
This is going to produce a UTXO that inside that output UTXO, there is this token. And it's going to be sent to the access control spending contract. As you can see, this, this guy is going to produce a UTXO with the date on that we are go about to see and send it to the access control contract. So what would be that? The, the, the first uh, thing that will be sent will be access control admin data, which again, as, you, as I said, it would be an app wallet, which there is a pop key hash and there is a domain and there is a session, POSIX time. And uh, again, if you look at for role-based uh, access control, you, you can see that there are these concepts of role permissions. We have another system, but permission can be changed with attributes and the session and so on. So domain. So let's say we have created an admin to handle cases, like, sorry, they're handling cases regards to this domain. Again, you have, I think it, if you go with the security, it should be decided that one access control admin should control just one domain. So it would be, it would be wise to do that instead of going with one admin to control everything because those are wallets. You know, I'm sorry, but shit happens. They get hacked, something happened. And, uh, but the good thing is they don't have the token. You know, in all the idea was, uh, okay, let's have the token inside someone's wallet or in our case, app wallet. So then your smart contract can recognize this is the actual correct wallet. So do whatever you want or do whatever you're supposed to do, you, you're supposed to do. But that's dangerous, you know? And some, you know, again, shit happened, that person or that app wallet mistakenly can spend that UTXO, send it to someone else, and, you know, that person, again, you can control that token that's uh, not being able to use with other people, but still it's, would be like harder to control. And for each of these uh, tokens, you have to go with uh, like with each admin, there is a specific token and you have to go with a specific minting token, uh, minting policy, or maybe you are going to with the uh, token names that put in like pop key hash of that guy in the token name. So that a person cannot, uh, that another person cannot use that. But again, there are some issue with that. And, that uh, and it's not just flexible enough. So instead of that, we have created this system that we will put this information, such as and again this since this is for my, uh, gatekeeper admin, but or which I call it RLM master. But same uh, data would would be. Uh, be implemented for access control admin too. So admin, pop key hash, but let me say, this is assignment and we are going to see what do I mean, but let me put this here. And instead of assignment, we have domain here. So admin pop key hash, this is data. Let me again, this will be data. And this UTXO, let's, let's call this, the, this guy is a UTXO. It's data would be this, and then it has a AC80, like access control authentication token as well. It, let me make it bigger. So we are going to tell the access control that if you have a UTXO coming from somewhere that has this token, this uh, token, then 
look at to the its data and accept whomever or decide based on that we are going to see the contract with decide based on that so this token will be locked into a smart contract not the wallet that would be safe uh, still again uh, there are things might happen with the contract but it, you have to make sure about that it, it would be still much better than you are sending authentication token to a wallet uh, so this will happen to this guy and then the admin con admin is going to be responsible for designating all these guys gatekeeper gladiator voting vote minter and so on and this guy so the app wallet of access control is going to designate and to specify app wallet for gatekeeper and the admin one robot is going to this designate or give an assignment or permission to another robot and yeah again oh that's dangerous for me. what since it is a utxo it's just a utxo right it's just a utxo with this datum and the token if something bad happens simply just suspend the utxo done no problem and we have a function as you guys saw that uh, burned act just by this i'm going to go inside the smart contract the access control contract and spend that uh, admin uh, utxo burn this guy and done actually i will by just spending this one uh, utxo i will put all the everything in this uh, uh, domain for designating into halt into the uh, hibernation so as long as there is no any uh, admin uh, access control admin there won't be new gatekeeper there won't be new gladiator smart contract or there won't be new admins and so on and same thing for gatekeepers if you spend that gatekeeper utxo there won't be uh actually no any witness and we are going to see that the uh, role of this app wallet in gatekeeper is actually more advanced uh, but sure this guy at access code has more power so just keep this in your mind and then i'm going to tell you that the guardian console is going to create another utxo as well that is uh, i think things become interesting <laughs> uh let me go to here so you guys know that uh there is a the concept of reference script uh, let me do I, do I need to go another contract another let's 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 go with another diagram and ref by the way uh we are we are working on the, there will be a repo you know, I hope in Gimbal Labs that we are going to push this code there so you guys are going to see and uh, explore it uh, ref a script and uh, ref a script uh, just yeah ref a script let's, let's go for it so this is all old, old, old design, but uh, I'm going to show you something interesting. So you, you have just in your mind that uh, these guys have admins. Yeah, but so you guys also know that in uh, after Vassil House Forge, uh, we can use <clears throat> something called reference script, which is um, putting your smart contract inside a UTXO so uh, as far as i know that i've seen most people they put their reference script which is a utxo that's contained uh the smart contract i think i can show you uh, uh if i go to this uh well uh, i think you know uh, bluetooth the utils uh, wallets 
setting contract reference. Yeah. So let's query that. Let, 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 let me show you that how does this UTXO look like? Uh, so let's go for the query and address. By the way, uh, uh, guys, until now, do you have any question or something until I'm going to show and query the blockchain because I think I forgot to run my uh, nodes as well. So if you have any question, please uh, raise your hand, but unfortunately I cannot see your hands for some reason. Yeah, hey, please go ahead. Uh, hello. I uh, uh, wanted to cover this. Okay, go, go ahead, go ahead. I uh, wanted to ask because I was kind of having the same problem. Uh, what would happen to the system if the app wallet gets hacked? What would uh, someone be able to do to the system? Exactly. If you put something in that wallet, well, that's, you, you have a problem because you have to be uh, really careful and you have to be worried that what's going to happen to the content of that uh, wallet. But this design, this design pattern doesn't need to need to worry about that. If it gets hacked for some reason, just consume the UTXO that you designated. This is a UTXO. And inside that UTXO, there is a token. And again, this UTXO is inside the access control contract, inside any, any contract. Let's say you have a contract and you want to go with the app wallet. Put that UTXO inside the contract. Do not send that UTXO to a wallet, any person, maybe even guardian counselor or whatever, the, or the owner of that. Don't do that. Send that to a contract, but tell how, how to do how Tell to your, your contract how to track that uh, uh, UTXO. So if that contract see this UTXO that has this ACAT, you can call something else like authentication token or whatever. It will know that, okay, these guys, I can look to its datum and whomever their pocket hash, domain session, whatever information is there about this app wallet, I can accept that for handling a transaction. Something happened, the wallet gets hacked. No problem. If you specify a redeemer, if you have thought about the, how to just spend it, just as a rework, as I call it, uh, if I can show you, uh, rework access control. And you are going to see that inside, this is uh, for, as I, as I again, you remember, this contract is for access control authentication and minting policy. And there is a redeemer for burn, burn ACAT, that's all. But I'm going to call this redeemer inside access control as well. Don't worry, we are going to see this contract and what's going on with that. But there is a revoke access control, which for now, I just uh, went with very simple stuff that if something happened, one of the, uh, as you guys again see that it is any here for burning any, one of the guys of the DAP manager council, whatever, will come create a transaction, take that uh, UTXO that he knows that that app wallet is gone and just uh, consume it. Send that uh, the, the two ADA, let's say it has two ADA, to the treasury, burn the token. And I, I here I specified that you have to burn it. And you might say, well, it's true. Everyone can burn it. No. It is specified that in order this condition to become true, as you can see, this is a pattern guard. That okay, there is a there is a pattern for falling the redeemer. And this is the redeemer. This is the data. I consider any datum exists, any datum doesn't matter. But there is should be one condition that this uh, revoke access must call another contract. Redeemer. And if that redeemer is not present in that transaction, which means that redeemer must uh, be alongside a contract, which again means that in order to reuse this uh, redeemer, you have to put uh, 
ACAT minter contract inside a transaction. If you put that, you have to follow the condition inside that. So therefore, that transaction only will be possible that one of the is this condition, this condition of this guy satisfy. That's all. It cannot be anything else because we are calling another contract. Contract redeemer, and you, you guys can see that uh, there is a function I wrote is get minter redeemer, and if you look at, I made it. It's actually it's uh, generalized. You can use that for in your contract, and I because it's generalized. You know, it doesn't matter what is it for a redeemer, but it would be better for going with a very specific time. But uh, here I just uh, wanted to show. I, I, there are some tests on doing that. This is generalized. So any ready any function that is going to just, but accept the currency symbol. The currency symbol of ACAT will be a parameter of this guy. And then I'm going to look up into the TX info redeemers. And TX info redeemers is a placeholder that's inside TX info. Uh, you can see that TX info redeemers is, uh, they didn't explain it, of course, you know, IOG, you know, but these guys is actually by using this guy, you can't interlink your contract with other contracts. <laughs> yeah, Jim, you know, it is very important. It's very important. Let me show you another important function that you can uh, Almost one kilobyte, one kilo, one thousand byte reduced from your uh, contract. He didn't talk about it. Why? I don't know. God knows why. What's going on with there? It just did it in the. I just this is very you know very has come into my mind. In the this uh, package, there is a function that we, we are going to see that MK untyped minty policy. This is, if you use this or for uh, same thing, MK un untype a stake validator or same thing, MK untype a validator, which we have that also, but they, they remove it and it, it is inside another, which is, I think it would be here. Yeah, yeah, uh, MK untype. Uh, let me see where this for validator, I think it would be a script, MK untype. So the, the idea of that, it will uh, remove your type validator and it will give you your contract. It's like you've written it completely uh, on type. So it's like a workaround. Like in, in, instead of writing your contract with built-in built data, write it with a customized type. So everything will be like here. Like we know that okay, there is a there is no you know parameters, datum, all this custom type. And then when you're going to you we want to compile it, which you can here at least I can show you access control compiler by just using the contra, uh, something called which they wrote it. I mean, this is the function they wrote it, MK on type validator. You just simply get rid of all the types, datum, redeemer, whatever have. And the end result of the uh, your compiled code would be same as the thing you might you you would write with just built-in data. So all the built-in data, constructor, all the hassle or difficulty that you face with handling with built-in data, you don't need to do that. Just go with the type of stuff everything with type and then at the compiler yeah, compilation just use this damn stuff that's all and this is a function composition so you can see that just very simple also by the way even optimizing that they didn't tell it. they said oh you have to go with it. it's, it's i don't really understand what's going on with them but anyway there are many things there are many magic inside this uh, library it's, even other libraries inside this guy like Go into all these packages. There are very good functions, best practice function. If you want to write some function like pure basket, 
literally look at this, you can find it. And it really, it's, it's really incredible what's here. You know, you, it, it's such a good point you make that there's like so much unexplored functionality here. That, and if we just take it one, one bit at a time, that's going to be exciting. Yeah. So currently, by using the TX info element, I called another contract. And by doing that, which I call that guardian contract, I make sure that uh, if something bad happens, I will just spend that particular UTXO and that app wallet will no longer be able to do anything at all. And I will use another wallet. I will just use, you know, AC, A, uh, ACAT mid to designate another. So I think this is the safe, but sure, if you think there might be some issue, please share. But, but uh, I think uh, the hand of A's is rise a long time ago. So go ahead, A, sorry, for keeping you along. A? Uh, A, if you are talking, I cannot hear you. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, you should be able to hear me okay. now. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Okay, awesome. Um, yeah, no worries. Um, so, 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 man, yeah, there's, um, as James said, this is like a 300 level um, take, which is good, is good. Um, you know, it, I'm uh, sorry, yeah, you have to know about the Pulitus little bit, so <laughs> yeah, you can't yeah, follow yeah. me on <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's it's absolutely cool, man. Um, yeah, so I've got a few questions, I suppose, about about the analogy uh, or the metaphor, uh, should I say? Um, you know, you mentioned uh, the arena and Caesar, uh, and also the different political um, paradigms, right? Um, I'm wondering, or yeah. my, one question is within the context of the arena is is a pol are the political paradigms existing within the guardians or is it existing within access control and the equivalent or, or is it existing within yeah access access control here which i'm assuming would be the equivalent of caesar um uh, yeah, so, uh, uh, yeah, it I'm can be, it that. can be, A, it can mm -hmm. be act as a Caesar, but you might say, uh, I, I want, I'm going to, after uh, showing this, I'm going to tell you one of the, another thing that if you consume that UTXO, that, that's a really important UTXO, mm -hmm. uh, you will actually make a, like, it would be like kill switch for the whole arena would be absolutely a kill switch. And actually, I really recommend to implement this stuff in your DAP so you can be sure that if something bad happens, if you just consume that UTXO, everything is stopped in your DAP. No one can be able to do anything. Even if it's custodial or non-custodial, it doesn't matter. It will stop it. So uh, the idea of Caesar, we can implement any different stage like in gatekeeper like here if you if uh, like it has a uh, like highest power like a voting more voting power or he can just halt or destroy everything just simply destroy everything. like he has uh, that power or he can be inside the access control and decide the fate of everyone inside here mm. i don't know to be honest I mean, it is, all, of course, these are philosophical questions, but we are at the age of being an engineer at the same time, philosopher, <laughs> you know, activist, you know. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, these things, uh, we, which, where you do you want to put that Caesar? Where do you put, want to put that dictator? For example, we can have very nice, best voting system, complete fair democracy. But if you implement that particular thing that I'm going to tell you about, that particular important UTXO, again, that would stop everything. If like it will, like what's happening in around the world with dictatorship, but they 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 are president, they nominate themselves, they always win, and if someone wants to race against them, well, you know, something suddenly happened to them. But even if they lose, there are some 
keys, there are some switches that if they pull it, if they enable it, if they you know, on it, off it, something, the whole uh, country will collapse. And the people know it. So they have to vote in favor of that guy, although they don't like it. And <laughs> mm -hmm. I hope we are going to see that. But uh, uh, that would be exploring, you know. I, I wonder, I want actually that we want to explore this very bad, very unfair, cruel system. And let's mm. see what's happened. Let's put this Caesar anywhere we want and see what's happened. Maybe one Caesar is enough. You know, maybe we human, someone was claiming, we human as a species, we are like uh, apes. We are like uh, baboons. There should be mm. alpha male, always. This is mm. the nature of humanity. We cannot work together. There has to be an alpha male. Let's call it leader. Let's call it prophet. Let's call it president. Let's call it whatever. But there has to be an alpha. There has to be a figure at the top so people can look to it and so on. Maybe that's we are like like we are the, that kind of a species. So okay, we have to implement that into this uh, a smart contract too. But man, maybe we are we are not. I that's my personal. We are not that species that we have evolved that. We are tool based uh, guy, and actually we are the only species that we will create tools to kill that alpha male and to bring that alpha male to brown. And all species evolved because of what they call sigma male or whatever. I don't know. Lao Lao <laughs> class. <laughs> Lao class male. <laughs> yeah. so i don't know i Brilliant. mean this is the things that uh, absolutely i really think absolutely we must for each of these we must uh, uh, explore but this is i believe this is the ground base for how to do that how to give power voting power how to go with that so we can so it's like a template that we can explore these uh ideas but again, yeah, but how, please ask your question, uh, Roberto, and sure anyone else if you can, want to. Call. Can I just ask real quick something? Sure, sure go ahead. How, how, how many people do we need to really try this out? I mean, uh, gotta, there's, for, there's like for a minimum now, viable. The minimum viable would be uh, at least there should be some several guys for council, garden council. Like, it's at least it can be one person, but for the fun of that, we can go with three person at least. So we can test at least the, the functionality. Then uh, all, everything else will be app wallet, which is, uh, again, we can assume that this is a robot, but someone like you, Steve, can share your pop key hash and say, okay, you are the admin, but we consider you a robot. You know, you are the robot. Like if, if someone implemented it with mesh, uh, they will replace uh, admin or like, your pop cash with this uh, robot uh, wallet, but uh, you you can act as uh, that admin. We need two admin or several admin at least for access control gatekeeper, and then we need two guys or at least for this uh, Gladiator or a smart contract that we will uh, specify some fun conditions. For example, your contract cannot uh, spend more than this, or your contract must follow this. Like for example, I'm giving you this uh, JSON file, like here, like here in the date, I'm going to give you Datum, not even, maybe Datum even, or a Redeemer, let's call it, uh, I mean, the Datum would be fun, I mean, more fun. The Datum is more complex. So let me show you some nice Datum. I'm going to give you this Datum, for example, I'm saying, hey, create a transaction or create a smart contract can that accept this datum. And you have to figure it out. You have to figure it out by yourself that, wait a minute, what the hell does this mean? And if, if you, if you uh, maybe if you were family, if you're a gladiator, you buy now that, no, this is an address. This is an address. If you were, if you want to put an address with a payment pop key hash and a, a stake pop key hash inside the data, that is the one that's the look like. So you have to go figure out research and, and find, oh, this is an address. So I'm going to write a data for that. And then other stuff. Okay, okay, what the hell is this? Is this uh, Boolean? Like this is this guy, for example. This constructor zero, empty field, zero. What, what is this? Is it a Boolean? Is it what? 
So how, how, that would be the challenge. But of course, this is very difficult. We don't want to go there. So those two guys that is going to uh, fight in that bloody transaction, and we are going to enjoy that, you know, because of our prime love instinct, you know, or original instinct. So we enjoy fighting. <laughs> so that's necessary too. And then voter, anyone, how many, uh, we will decide that how many wants to vote. So for this system to work for at least right now, we need this set of people, but we can again make it less, but I think right now, for example, right now, we are enough people right now we have, it's absolutely possible to go with complete implementation of this system and you know, enjoy the fun. Did I answer your question, Steve, correctly? I mean, no, yes. I mean, you, you won't be lazy, don't worry. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that sounds like that sounds like a challenge, but yeah, <laughs> I get you. That's a good idea too, you know. And and they will. Uh, I don't know. Maybe they can win their freedom. You know, for example, there are UTXO that we send to that a specific gladiator contract, or there is another wallet. And if they solve this, if they win this transaction, bloody, I don't know, that would be their price. Okay, go ahead, enjoy your. Prize and enjoy your freedom. That would UTXO would be your energy. That's uh, you know very good. But uh, James, go ahead, please. Um, your prize. Um, oh, Roberto's been waiting. Yeah. Or, sorry, Roberto. Please. What do you think? Um, so I uh, just following the the Caesar example. So this the the garden council and the access control would be sort of like institutions that uh, are checks and balances, right? So. If access control is a CSER, Garden Council is a Senate, and right now we would need unanimous approval from the Garden Council in order for the access control to implement whatever the conditions are. And once those are implemented, they are only they are compartmentalized. Is that the function of the arena? So you are not really CSER because you can only implement that policy within a certain scope. And then, if that's true, what I'm trying to understand what would be the function of the App Wallet Arena Master, what does he? Okay. So let me tell you again about that. That do not think about a smart contract as an entity that's going to do something. Like access control is not going to be a Caesar. Gatekeeper is not going to do something. They are tools. They are like access control. What is it? This is government. This is the system that's controlling us. Who's controlling us? Popkey hash. Who the hell is this? I don't know. Some guy, senator working in it. So this access control is the parliament, is the government, is the place, it's the tool that the popkey hashes. Some of them are actual human behind those popkey hash. Some of them are not. For example, right now we have uh, people controlling us by I don't know, camera or some sort of allies. It's not people that are doing, there are tools, there are app wallet that they are controlling, artificial intelligence, as they call it, right? They are controlling, but they're using a system. They are using the, think about this as a system. What the hell is this Gladiator smart contract? Well, we are the middle class, right? I mean, at least we, can, we, have, we have consider ourselves that middle class, privileged middle class, quote unquote. This a smart contract is the means for us to fight in this society, to win something, to become winner. So this is the analogy that I'm really thinking about this for the, uh, the whole this voting concept. And this voting was done and was assigned by this council, this, but this government, this a smart contract is the government. But why do we get my say, what do you mean? A, a government is a social contract. Right now we are using a call it a smart contract. So every contract, imagine every country is a social contract. If I am a worker, if I'm a teacher, it's a social contract. I am contract with this society. Okay, I do this and I want to earn this, but do I have to be this? So th this was the analogy, man. Caesar, he is inside the council, guardian council. Maybe there will be another system there will be like, there is a garden council and there is Caesar as well. Caesar, how do I write that? Like, 
I know the Nero, Nero, Nero you guys know who's the Nero, Nero Pakiash or Caesar. So yeah, we have the council too. And what we have a Nero, we have a Caesar as well. And he can do something that this council cannot do it. And I'm going to tell you what, and this would be really interesting. But a spot contract are the tools that Popkey hash is using. Some of the popkey hash are people, some popkey hash are, you know, all popkey hash are equal, but some popkey hash are more equal, you know, as James Orwell, you know, was saying. <laughs> so think about the Caesar, anyone as a popkey hash, just popkey hash, just wallet, the entity that can sign and transaction. Everything else is a tools, is a, a system. James, James, go ahead. The, the metaphor, it's just delightful to like build up the metaphor together. So thanks. Um, and just wanted to point out, like we have an immediate use case for this when it comes to approval, both of projects being added to a GPTE instance, right? So any project that's listed represents a potential claim on some treasury. And at the other end of that process is... Um, approval of whether or not a commitment once made should be distributed so it's okay. it's thrilling yeah this is this is thrilling how relevant this is to an immediate use case and i think we can build it up as we move through the course and uh, i i i hope that uh, this will become really uh, maybe the main uh, principle in cardano to be honest so yeah. instead of going with yeah. the member based organization people will start to create this on-chain, like do not trust, verify. Very good. Uh, like sure, it. there should be trust. We are human, of course, we know it. We, you know, this is a blockchain. We have all these amazing contracts, as, as I was telling, but still we have pop key hash. There has to be someone outside do something. If everyone has stopped doing, every pop key hash has stopped moving, whole blockchain will die, you know? So it's very, um, at least in my opinion, it's unrealistic to think that, yeah, we have to, we can completely eliminate humans, aka right. pop key hash. We can, but, well, we could be the voices for that, right? Like yeah. this is, there's going to be a whole bunch of different approaches over time. And some people are going to continue to stay in that place of code is law. And right by extension, humans are irrelevant. I yeah. I reject that personally. I think you do too. It sounds like right. So let's let's build for that. So the I've got I wanted to show you that uh, what's the reference script and uh, I'm going to uh, hey what by the way your hands is up good. Yeah sorry oh, okay, actually Eris, sorry Eris is uh, leaving. Take care man and thank All you right. for coming. See you Eris. He's already left. Um. Yeah, my, my audio has been giving me some issues. So I've been out of the conversation for the last, I don't know, five, 10 minutes. Um, but yeah, thanks for answering the, uh, the, the, the Caesar question. Um, yeah, I had a few other questions, but I'll just sort of um, ask one specifically, given that, you know, we, we, in terms of time we've only got like five minutes within the allotted time and uh, I'll, I'll be jumping off of that at that point but I'm just curious um to add on to the point which both of you just made you mentioned a DAO one of the issues I take with a DAO is that implicit in it is that it eradicates humans so every time because again language is important every time someone uses the word DAO to me and I think to most people it goes to this idea of code is law and that humans are basically, you know, eradicated from that environment. Um, so I think maybe I don't, I've been using a different term, which I came up with, right, which I've shared in the past, which is the AGE. You know, other other folks, are, I think you can come up with different terms. I think it's important to kind of have, um, you know, a, a different thing, which at least community, it might not be universally uh, understood to be, you know, what, you know the equivalent of the DAO, which has now become like the default thing when it comes to thinking about organization that people think within crypto right we're still earlier on like let's start to actually you know yeah. um think about 
these things. You know, I think. You know, if the people say code is law, okay, I kind of agree with it, but uh, the law should have limitation. The law, 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 of course, some people say law was made to be broken. Okay, uh, fine. Uh, that, that, that's kind of, let's go, let's, let's call it code. But the thing is, law was made for people. Law wasn't made for just the sake of being law for something. That's I really under I, that under I don't understand that that if their code is law that law exists for people for human so we cannot consider that human ir ir irrelevant but the thing is right now at this even the Cardano even with the Ethereum I don't know how a more simple advanced blockchain we do not have a system to go with autonomous really. As they got decentralized autonomous organization, we do not have that. It's not autonomous. For example, a Cardano, someone has to make transaction. Someone has to do an action. That's not autonomous. Someone has to do something in Ethereum. That's not autonomous. Someone exists. Someone must be someone wallet. Someone token, someone funds. Someone. It's we don't have. I mean, people are of course they are saying, oh, it's. A, uh, decentralized uh, because of course okay, okay this is but it's not autonomous once we reach to level that we humans say okay i don't want to have wallet i will choose and buy a robot that robot mm -hmm. is going to handle my wallet and he's doing everything i don't i will just once a day ask him hey am i rich now or like, <laughs> like, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Every time I ask that robot, are we there yet? <laughs> yeah, you'd be like, yeah, the kids in the car asking that on a trip. But yeah, yeah, I, I just want to 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 point that out, and this kind of goes to the conversation which we were having yesterday uh, in the book club about social consensus and technical consensus, and uh, I'm glad that at least we're on the same page in terms of understanding that humans are super important and we should be building out infrastructure tools to actually enable um the betterment of that so uh cool cavadias um go for it uh yeah so basically i wanted to agree with you that saying that keeping the human parameter in it is important because in the end of the day like saying code is low is nice and it's important to, for the code to be low and that's what we are going for here because I'm building a DAO as well in air quotes I did by the way yeah uh, but um, I feel like it's important to remember that we are building a governance system and the governance system is something that is a tool for humanity and as a tool yeah it needs right. to serve the human element of it uh, the only thing we can do is put rules on it and guidelines that are to be followed and to be followed is like something that when I started working on this DAO air quotes again uh, came to think a lot about and I guess a lot about philosophy in the end about how much rules you can put in something like that so in the end I feel like you need to give the option to people to find the DAO that they feel more natural about the one that has a manifesto that resonates with them personally and with that it don't need to be code it needs to be the duty of the person to achieve that goal that is equal for each other and what we are trying to build is a governance system for groups to take up and make it for their group basically i don't think we can make a general DAO. i feel all we can make is at the least right right now it. we can yeah i think right now we cannot do that with the I current think there technology isn't current philosophy. there is on to make one as well i feel like it's important to keep the human parameter in it and the human parameter can make mistakes but trusting the community and the humanity to make it in a way so that they can vote off what it don't suit them basically so I feel like, you know, if, 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 in terms of mistake, uh, we can create a system that if something happens, it won't destroy everything. So it's mistake and tolerance. So it has tolerance that if that system is not resilient enough or robust enough to not accept one single mistake, I, I don't, 
I don't really well, consider that sincere. And, and to take I it don't... a step further, you 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 can't make progress without safe mistakes. It's right. Not only yeah. not only do we want to protect safely against mistakes, it's it's essential to the progress of figuring out what these tools are for. Uh, from the very earliest days of like playground, we talked about minimizing the blast radius. Right. People have to be able to screw up without hurting each other too much. Because that's how we learn important things. So let, let's build that into the system. Uh, that's exactly what I meant as well. And I mean that, for example, in a system like Catalyst, Catalyst let's say, you can expect the wrong param the fault tolerance to be, sorry, let me take that again. You can expect in a system like Catalyst, the parameter of error to be, in the case of a wrong vote of the community to invest in something that ends up hurting the ecosystem in a way but in the end of the day that's the human parameter in the whole system that you can't get away out and the only thing you can do is like make it so that you can't ruin the whole system due to a judgment error yep exactly so uh, just uh, if but uh, please uh... I don't want to, because I know that if we go to this uh, philosophical, and as I call, we are all here engineers. Or we can, maybe we don't have that uh, title or I don't know that bachelor of engineer, but we are thinking as an engineer. We are inventing. We are building something. But sure, we have. We are facing this uh, philosophical philosophical question as well. And uh, this is the age for that. Look, like even if the car manufacturer, they have to, they fit their autonomous car, they have to create, uh, they are facing this question that if there is a, a situation that there is a one person and there is uh, left side and there is five person, or there, there, let's say there is a, a river at the uh, right side and the car is about to, you know, hit the guy and, or the car must go to the river and kill the passenger. Uh, that's an uh, old, very old uh, philosophical question. So the car must do what exactly? Autonomous, okay, the code is law. What law should be applied here? What code should we do that this car should kill the, the guy at the front of it in order to save the passenger? Or the car must go to the river and kill the passenger in order to save that uh, pedestrian or that, that guy in the street? We okay, don't know. So to answer that, I believe that all we can do is make it so that we can make it possible so that the two groups that disagree can each main, make their own DAO, let's say, and each follow their goals for that. Yeah. So that's, in the that's, DAO perspective... We have two DAO. One of exactly. them killed passengers, one of them killed... <laughs> exactly. You can't do more than that. Like, you need to leave the human parameter in that because it's a governing system. It's meant for humans. It's meant for the ideal and the manifesto to be a human one. You can't code that. That needs to be in each person's responsibility to yeah, go yeah, there. Yeah, but Kavan, uh, uh, if it's some point say autonomous, autonomous, it means someone has to code that. If it is not coded, it's not autonomous. If it, uh, it is I, autonomous. I, people I, can be autonomous. People. I feel mm. like the the meaning of autonomous like systems is like that is meant for people as well sure that car is meant and built for human but there is a situation that car must decide on the fate and the life of the people which path that car should take based on we the are code not talking about should... ai though we are talking right here about governance systems Okay, that's governance as well. You know, there are people that governance are not fair to them. They born in they they born in the low class. Should we put them in low class because they burn? They are okay. Some people they were privileged to be OG, to be voter. You, me, you, James, everyone here were privileged to know about the what contra blockchain, and we got to used to know it. Now we have a token. In five years, that token worth a lot. We are privileged. Some people are not. Most people, billions of people, they are not. They don't know what the hell is blockchain at all. But that DAO, well, we'll right now, the DAO say, okay, you have a highest token. You, you are the 
boss here or you are the chief here you see because what oh we have we, we've written the code uh, you excuse have me, so uh yeah. i need to sorry to interrupt him that uh because i feel like having a doubt that basically for me in my eyes and the doubt that i want to create uh it would be great to able if i was able to explain to you a bit of how it works but in the purest form is a catalyst that basically everyone can go and create a proposal the proposal is going to pass through stages that is going to update the answer after the results and after from another contract is going to be able to take the agreed upon amount so in that way i want to build the doubt that it's autonomous in the way that the community is going to build is going to be the only one that can decide upon uh, if a proposal is going to pass or not. So in my eyes, that makes it autonomous. And uh, the decided upon amount is going to be then, auto not automatically, the user will have to create the transaction, but it's going to be able to take it from the treasury of the DAO, which is in the end, in the DAO is just a treasury and some smart contracts that basically assigned to people wages. So in a way, it's a, a system, a new working type system. So there's no boss, there is no people above you or anything. It's just a community deciding if the proposal is gonna, um, is, if the proposal is gonna bring the achieval of the manifesto or the goal into existence in a better or worse way. I don't know if that makes sense. Sorry for my bad English and terminology. No, no, it's okay. We are going to build it. I'm making sure. I'm. I'm going to show. Make sure we are going to build this, and we are going to see what's going on with it. And we are going to extra to test it. We are going to attack it first. We rebuild it, then attack it, because that's the job we are doing. Penetration testing. We have. We uh, want to make. This is great, actually, because. That's what I've been working into a new minting system. And I would love if you'd like to take a look at that and see how you could. Sure. So uh, uh, I see A has, but A, would you please give me some minutes? I want to explain this concept and then we, we have, we have uh, but I don't know. Can I do that, A, please? Um, actually, I was hoping to just quickly um, jump out and give a, a reference to the oh. car thing. Um, yeah, is a uh... it's okay, it's okay. Uh, so, just, so, just because I wanted to point out this, so uh, I don't know, I don't want to make it this as a cliffhanger, but uh, at least I want to explain a little bit about this. Uh, so uh, I want you to see the Caesar is going to do what exactly just before that, okay, so, oh, okay, cool. Um, so right, that how it. a Caesar oh. can destroy whole voting system and whole domain just by one action. How? What, okay. what, what do you mean with the, the, the burn transaction with the data? Not mint, burn, yeah. not minting, nothing, something else. That's that's okay. Okay, okay, okay. Something okay. completely <laughs> else, but that's destroyed <laughs> that plan. Okay. So for reference a script, as you can see, these are the UTXO. Okay, if you create a reference a script, it means you put your Plutus spot contract inside the UTXO and put it inside the uh, ledger. So, okay, but if you can see, there is some other stuff there, which maybe let me zoom it. There are datums. So this UTXO can have datum as well, as well as the, the smart contract. So now think about it, where we can use this. If it is a, we can put datum inside it, why not send in this reference script to a smart contract? instead of a wallet. So, okay, that's fine. We can put some datum inside this transaction, inside this UTXO, along with the script and send that to a smart contract. But what if inside that smart contract, we specify that if you are going to use a reference script, that must be that exact uh, UTX so that you are going to use it as a reference a script. So as you guys know, for creating that transaction, if we look at it to one some example in the creation of reference, uh, for example, not reference a script even, 
for something like let me go with this so in a, an example of transaction you know that there are some switches you have to specify in the transaction so a spending tx in reference which will be the utxo that we will send to that smart contract a spending produce a script v2 this is the well boilerplate we have to and there is something a spending reference tx in line datum present this is referring to the datum of this utxo and you know what is really cool about this since the protocol does not allow you to spend this UTXO, that, that's the protocol rule. If you are going to reference this UTXO for your uh, transaction for the Pulotus, you cannot spend it. Therefore, that datum will be safe. That datum cannot be destroyed, cannot be updated even. So now think about how we can implement this guy. Let's think that we will create a reference script datum. And in our case, I have access control reference script datum. And then inside that, I'm going to put some data inside it which I know that this won't be a spend. So if, again, one of the things that we can use this, another functionality, you don't want, you don't have many things. Uh, you, maybe you, there are some uh, stuff that there are constant in your DAP, or in, in or DAO, they are constant. This is constant. We will put it inside the uh, contract parameter, like the, the cancel, the pop cash. But there are things that they are not constant. Of course, they have to be changed. We will put it in data. But this guy is kind of constant, but not. It's like semi-constant. Since, again, as I said, the protocol does not allow you to consume this data. And since this UTXO is inside a contract, which you cannot spend that <laughs> for whatsoever, you can rely to this inline datum as a contract parameter or as your DAP parameter, but it is flexible. If you don't want that, if you want, you can just spend it. Spend this uh, UTX, create another one with new set of these. So one of the uh, uh, usage of this guy, if I really want you guys to explore, and we are going to explore it a lot, that think about the reference script in line data and think about sending that to not a wallet to a smart contract and you're a small and what a smart contract same as smart contract same guy the, this utxo is coming from exactly same contract it is referring to itself to validate itself <laughs> this is the beauty this it is it's it's doing doing that and you might say, well, someone can create anything they want, you know, they can send something with the same thing. How my SCART contract can know this is the actual correct reference SCART UTXO? Well, you have tokens as well, right? We have we have made this SCART guy, access control guy. Put the token inside that UTXO as well. So your reference script. UTXO has an authentication token that will tell to the same contract, hey, this is the actual current script. And you might say, okay, what are the things that I can check? Well, if you look at to this uh, Pulitus V2 ledger context, if you come down to TX out, there is new field that's really interesting. TX out reference a script. If you, if you use a TX out, a UTXO, let's call it a UTXO, that is coming from a wallet, this is nothing, this is empty. But if you use this from a reference a script, this is giving you a script hash. So you can, inside the contract, which I did, check that does this reference a script is same as hash of the same smart contract or not? I know it's coming, becoming complicated. I understand, but that's the thing that we are 
uh, <laughs> we are referring this. So we are we are using this as stuff so that that's we could become the gladiator. So let's look at the function. Own a script reference the out. I just said, hey, find a UTXO inside what exactly TX, where, where is this TX info reference script? And again, you might, you might see that it is not input. You do not need to spend something. This guy, as you can see, TX info reference input is the new beast, is different list, is something that you can use it. And then uh, James is, oh, James, let, oh, James, James, are you going? Sorry, I just saw a hand. That's oh, no, my, no, not leaving, not leaving. Oh, sorry, I, I saw just uh, uh, like uh, saying bye. So I'm just sorry, I just want to wrap this up. And then I'm, because I'm throwing at you a lot of new information, a lot of possibility, and then we want to talk about it, but I just want to record. So this TX info input uh, is the one here. Inside the transaction, everything you have, for example, we have a transaction that we have three different uh, smart contracts, three different reference input. Imagine all of these guys have a inline data. All of them can be used and none of them can be spent because that's against the protocol. And inside the transaction, inside your smart contract here, you have a specify, hey, take the reference, te, te, ref, TXL reference script, which you got, you saw it. It's, it's one of the field of TX out. Check whether that UTXO inside that transaction, which you're, is equal with own hash. And I, there is a function that I wrote validator hash to a script hash. Um, there are, there, the, there, it's just type changes. So converting a type, you can see this. It's just, I'm just checking validator hash. I took this hash and put it front of another type, which is a script hash. Everything are same. Currency symbol, policy ID, validator, all of them are same, just the hash. I just by changing that, I check, hey, take it. This is a uh, own hash, it's a function inside the, uh, this guy. I mean, inside here, you can find the own hash. Yeah, here it is, own hash. Give it the script context, it gives you the validator hash. So I'm just checking, I'm just converting this validator the hash that I got from this function to the script hash and comparing that to the TX of reference of that uh, UTXO. And if it is same, it means this UTXO is coming from same contract. Okay. No, sorry, this is not from that. This means that this contract is actually the one that we are referring. This is the same contract. This is the same contract that is using, but it has an address as well. This address. What is this address? This is the address that I'm selling. If you put that reference inside the wallet, this TX out address will be the wallet. But if you put this inside a smart contract, which would be again, as I said, as I said, same as smart contract, this will be the address of same thing. Again, it is, as I said, there is its own hash and there is another function, escape hash address. Again, this function exists inside the, uh, I'm just using this again. This is escape hash. Where is this escape hash address? Uh, I think it would be another uh, repo. Uh, sorry, another package, it would be, I think, would be an address. A script hash address. You see, it's a ledger. I think it would be uh, here, pull it to speak. By the way, you try to not use the ledger package mostly because there are some off chain code that will break your stuff. So, pull it to speak on ledger, it will take a validator hash and return address. So by this, I'm just checking, hey, only accept, only find that. When you find it, I'm going to take out its inline data. So as you can see here, I'm just check, taking that inline data. You see that, take a t, get TX out inline data on a script reference TX out. So go ahead, uh, Kawandi, sorry, uh, take care. Uh, so, 
By doing that, I took many stuff that's supposed to be a contract parameter, supposed to be many things. And let me tell you something. What the Caesar has. Here, I specify in all the condition that you must find access control reference a script data. If you do not find that, sorry, I throw error. You, you, you cannot work it. Same thing with other. If you want designate a gatekeeper, you must find that. That must come from your address. It must contain your script hash and it must uh, be this specific, like this datum, this pattern of data. It doesn't have, sorry, none of this function work. So what is a pop key hash, AKA Nero Caesar is able, and only he is able to consume this reference as script or to produce that reference as script. The whole structure that you are seeing is depend on that reference as script. And you have specified it. No one can pick up another contract and put it inside it because there is authentication token inside the reference script UTXO. That customer contract, that access control, even to gatekeeper, even for and many things, you, 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 can, you can implement this idea for all, any, any contract. It cannot work, you know, because it, it cannot reference to anything. That is the one that uh, Caesar has, or someone can do that. That there is, that if he pull that, uh, I don't know, let's like call him from that government, let's say this access control, the whole thing collapse. That's the thing we are going to implement to collapse whole structure, access control gatekeeper. There is no reference to script. Everyone is panicking. Someone has spent that. Why? Because the narrow, because the Caesar didn't like the voting. He didn't vote. He wanted to act very cool and, you know, uh, very fair. But he saw that, okay, if I'm, if I'm going to hell, I will bring everyone <laughs> down with me to hell. How? I'm going to spend this transaction. I'm going to spend this reference. And then none of you will be able to create that uh, uh, reference a script. Therefore, everything is finished, it's done. So thank you for uh, listening to me. I just want that, but we can in the future, in future, we will go to all this functionality, as you can see, uh, I just accept Redeemer and Dayton, but there are many other conditions that I'm uh, getting. Access control admin, which you, we saw that, and we are going to use as an app wallet for it. Then the reference is script Dayton, but we have gatekeeper. And we can have a uh, reference script in line dental for that guy as well, right? And we can put some information that we can be sure that no one is going to be able to spend it because it's not in wallet. And that data will be there forever until someone, aka Caesar, comes uh, and uh, spend it. And there, there should be some other stuff, like for minting the... A, a, for here, there, there is another authentication token for gatekeepers, which I call uh, here. If you have eight like, other, but we can call it like RNA gatekeeper one. So AGAT means an authentication token, which we will put it inside that uh, gatekeeper reference script. So again, that gatekeeper can know. Okay, I can look up to this uh, reference script. This is the correct one, and then I can read information from it. So I really recommend take a look to that and you can uh, extract some uh, contract parameter that you think might change and put it inside this data. Home. And uh, you are good to go. You know, if, if something happened, you can tell it, it would be immutable. The contract is safe. You just change that data. Home. So that data home is kind of semi-constant. So well, thank you for listening. I know we uh, passed a lot of time, but uh, yeah, th thank you for today. And uh, we are going to explore this and I just wanted to share many, many things that I'm, I'm again, this concept of this uh, many stuff. And but, but this is a system, this is the role-based system, by the way. And this system is not meant to go with very uh, scalable system. If you go to the, 
types, we can see that there are roles, minter, committer, mediator, withdrawer, certifier, revoker, all of these are app wallet or people can be pop cash. And then there are domain, but we can have something called attribute as well. So we can give these roles attribute or we can give some, let's call them a permission as well. So we can go details per permission. But the issue is if these roles become bigger and bigger, it, it would complex us up. So there is another better, which is called attribute based. And there is other uh, system that maybe we'll design it one day, which is next generation, which works with a completely graph. Um, it would be like a DAG, if you guys know what is DAG. Next uh, generation, access control. And it is as you can, it's DAG. And why we do, we do that? Imagine there are several DAOs. Each of them have its uh, uh, mesh of uh, a smart contract, but there are some entities that they want to share. For example, we have Cardano for climate here. We have other, for, um, there is Gimbala. There should be like James wants, uh, should, should, or well, based on the decision that was done before, has to have this uh, access control with this uh, DAO, with that DAO, but all of them should be on chain. How do we do that? That would be the, I hope we put in the next uh, design pattern that we are going to explore. It would be completely, as I said, I'm going to just tell you, he really is complex. Now, if, even for cybersecurity, implementing this is really uh, hard because it's have all this mesh, uh, mesh design. But just check it out and yeah. Take care and thank you for listening. I'm done and please, James and A, please. And I'm, I'm sorry to keep you A, but just I wanted to share this idea for you. So I'm going to stop sharing. Oh, no, no, go ahead. Maybe I'm going to share something. Please go ahead. Thank you, Sebastian. Yeah, yeah no worries, man. Um, that was uh, that was interesting, quite complex. Um, but yeah, as you said, we'll keep on exploring. Um, the reference which I wanted to give was one which I've spoken about in the past, um, which I've put the link in the chat there. It's a book called um, The Car That Knew Too Much. Um, and yeah, it's about this idea of social consensus within the context of culture. Uh, yeah, so being culture specific. So... Um, Wait, that's weird. Why is it not acceptable? Maybe, yeah, because of my, you know, uh, country. Unfortunately, yeah. when you're Iranian, you, you have to yeah. deal with a lot of us, you know. That's, that's okay, you know. That's no messed up. Um, yeah, but maybe you can have a look at the, uh, the, the Wikipedia. No, page. definitely. I'm going to check it. I'm going to save this link. Yeah. But uh, really, I really think that uh, in the, we are in the age that uh, actually not just uh, engineer with stuff, we are going to see biological engineer that are, have, they should have some ethical question or philosophical yeah. question. And but we are going to agree. see that and it would be really amazing age that. Yeah, the, it, also, I'm really, go yeah, I'm really quite, no, so go on. I just wanted to say that uh, based on the experience, how we, I'm sorry for the language, how we fucked up the environment at the beginning, <laughs> we are going to do the same thing with the, uh, or body or whatever code or blockchain we are having with so-called code is law. But then we will learn from. I hope, but just, I just hope that we won't, uh, you know, uh, do not extend, we will not uh, exterminate ourselves, like we will not uh, completely wipe up our humanity just because we wanted to explore something. But yeah, I think we will see that. And sure, it would be really fun. So go ahead, sorry. Yeah, no, it's all right. Um, I'm interested in in the um the graph approach because I've really been looking into graphs and yeah, so the 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 DAG thing to me is interesting. And then lastly, um, yeah, just all this conversation about Caesar and um and apes and so on. So yeah, you see about. that the Caesar can do what that that's really powerful. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, that it Caesar can really destroy the whole government. Yeah, that, that's the whole thing. So now you, we have a tool to destroy the whole unchained government. Just destroy the reference script. Everyone was referencing. Just destroy the foundation, the core principle of people believing that. That's done. That nation is done. 
Yeah. AKA Kill reference that's grief. <laughs> yeah, Master Key or Kill Switch. Yeah, it got me thinking about Planet of the Apes and and you know, James uh, made a reference um, you know, to the possibility of using performance or theater or storytelling in order, you know, to get people to understand concepts as we've been do doing here, you know, referring to Caesar and uh, you know, the, the, the arena and so on, like, you know, th these mapping stuff to stories uh, and characters and, you know, concepts in, in that way, I think really helps, um, you know, people to uh, grapple and sort of understand what technical um, possibilities could actually, uh, what, what the implications could be. So yeah, Planet of the Apes, like I, I got to thinking about that and the character of Caesar in that and I think Kobo or Kuba, I forget what you know what, what the villain's um, uh, name was, but yeah, uh, interesting movie. Uh, but I feel like I, I, I want to watch it back because from a governance standpoint, and and also um, uh, Kavadias earlier said that made a slight distinction between um, between AI and governance, and to me, I do not see that distinction. And actually, within this book, you really get to see that governance is so fundamental to AI, right? And trying to like detach that and say like, you know, um, because basically AI is, is basically just a whole bunch of decisions, right? It's uh, app wallet. I really can't, I, we can't just call it, it's app wallet, my dear A. It's an app wallet. It's a pop key hash run by code. Yeah. It needs, but then, is, I'm sure there should be some code that we can talk, but there, there is a government system but what we think right now, AI is just app wallet. We have a pop key hash for ourselves. We are protecting ourselves. We are uh, the deed, decentralized identity. How do we that identity is pop key hash? Right now, what they are thinking, AI is just that app wallet. But for sure, in future, we have actual real smart contract that they are really smart. I'm just a bunch of dumb codes. But yeah, I, I, I'm I'm with you in this idea, but we will see. Cool. But it's dangerous, uh, by the way, AI. Hey, you, you cannot say this stuff there out loud. You know, it's really not dangerous. Like, it's, it's scary. You know, mm. you think, oh, we are going to give this to uh, code? Hmm? No, no. Yeah, you yeah, feel? I agree. I agree. Um, but then it, the thing is, it's scary to those who do not understand it, right? Um once you, you know, the same thing, you know, we fear that which we do not understand. The more you get to understand something, the less, you know, you fear it. I, 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 I come to uh, it. I beg you, I beg to differ for you here. For example, look at the animes in Japanese uh, anime or movies or something. I think maybe uh -huh. it's really cultural as well. You know, when you they, uh, talk about AI, it's something cute, very friendly, it has some soul, you know, a lot of stuff. But when we see some uh, like Western movie about that future, AI is very like Terminator, they, are, they, they want to get rid of human as much as possible. It's mm. something I think is cultural as well. Let me, I don't know, it's cultural, I don't know, it's something. Yeah. The, the, the point view is not just knowing, it's kind of approaching to this that I see Maybe I only saw it in Japanese that how they look at to the AI that is really they they feel that that it's it's a human it's it's hot soul you know it's fine it's cool their future is always very bright you know it's very advanced bright it's very nice you can see it in their you know movies animes but when we see other places talk about AI like in fifty years from now it's very dark. Everyone is hungry. Everyone is angry. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dystopian. Yeah, I, I mean, it's super important to to I think to have both perspectives. And you know, the truth is usually I think lies somewhere in the middle. But anyway, James, um, I do not mean to um, uh, push this uh, any further. We've gone half an hour over. Um, yeah, please um, uh, speak your piece. And uh, yeah. I suppose wrap this up. Well, thank you, and, A, for your uh, insight. And, and yeah, no, it's, this is awesome. it's delightful to and to be taking. There, there's so many different angles at once that we're thinking about here, but I really I like this angle of kind of building up the story and even just reflecting on my own journey through today's lecture. Like when when Mix started talking about Caesar, in a way, it was just it it felt really funny. 
and and it made me just feel really happy to be here and and if we can hook people with that kind of oh look how fun this is look at this kind of quirky metaphor but then we take that into wait but who was caesar really like you know <laughs> take, it, take it to that direction like that's yeah. what a cool journey to take people on um and this and mix that it, it feels so good to see some connections um from what you're talking about uh to, to some other stuff and i can start to see how thank you the course is going to fit together so like everything you're describing with reference uh datum that's that's the backbone of the contributor tokens right is this ability yeah. of what what information goes in that reference datum you did a really good job explaining how that is viewable but not consumable and what the implications of that are for for a validator that it's so interesting um and i one thing i want to add is is you know, for a given datum at a reference UTXO, you can have different access rights for changing different fields of that datum, right? It's not just who has the right to change the whole thing. You can have, hey, like if you have this access, you can change this part of this datum. But if you yeah. have that access, you can change that part. Yeah. And as we start to play with that, I think that's really going to take people uh, to exciting new places. Exactly. That would be really maybe maybe substitute the contract parameter that we thought, oh, it's contract yeah. parameter. If we yeah. decided we cannot change it anymore. No. Yeah. We can, can change we can this change one, it. but not that one, right? Yeah, there's exactly. there's no way to change this part once it's set, but this other thing, right? And and now yeah, exactly you start... as you can see yeah. here, the condition I set for this uh, particular just oh. to create the gatekeeper, there are many other fields here, but I said, hey, just use these specific fields from this guy and just have these specific things to check it. That's all. You cannot do anything else. And I, I really, the beauty is this, I don't need to be worried someone is going to change that in the transaction. It is impossible to do it, but yeah. it's possible to update. By the way, uh, if we want to go with that path, I don't know, maybe, I don't want to make it complicated, but do you think we should have, I'm, I'm just asking you this, James, mm -hmm. do you think we should have a just a specific contract to hold all these reference contracts or no? It would be better right. to put all these contracts inside themselves. Right. Now, what right. do you think? Which one? Well, so let me let me say that question a different way. The goal of our course should be to figure out how we can get as many students as possible to participate in that debate. Okay. Mm, okay. And so thinking backwards from planning towards a debate like that during a live coding, let's think about what do students need to understand in order to have an informed opinion on that and then everything we do can lead towards that point and that look at look at this now we have this structure called smart contract gladiator debate should be a part of that right so let's let's get people to understand it um so we got to think a little bit more about how to get there but that's like what you laid out today is is weeks of content and so it's what we now need to figure out how to do is is how to roll it out piece by piece. Um, but but yeah. I I feel confident that the 100 and 200 level modules are going to start moving people towards this. And so I'll be I'll be bringing stuff to you and saying, hey, how does this look as a building block towards that? Um, and it's and it's coming up in projects too. So what you said about the AI as the app wallet. That's that's exactly been the message to the one up one down team. So we have a very uh, we have a basic implementation of that over there. Um, that idea resonates, and so let's let's keep building on that idea. I think that's something that people can can understand pretty early on. Um, but yeah, I need to let let's all uh, that's that's homework for all of us. Let's. Think uh, about I just want to tell you that. Uh, uh, this is one of the things, by the way, this is, I think this is a starting, and uh, I want to tell you guys that just look at this, that this course is going, we are going to build, and yeah. uh, we, feel, yeah, we felt that anger, I personally felt that from IOG, Pultus Pioneer Program, too, but they are way behind us, you know, they, they are 
I think years behind us to go <laughs> with this kind mm. of a stuff. Imagine, right? So I really think that if we uh, go with this, uh, like I, 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 I hope people engage. But uh, my thing, my thinking is, do people engage to this stuff, or really it's really complicated? It's not even for four hundred level, James. Yeah. Like it's, it should be beyond that. Like this. It's... It's it's such a good. I, I, well, I, I, I'm not sure about that. People. No. Really. Okay. Well, here's 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 the thing. Like, okay, and let's uh, here. Let's stop recording. <laughs> See you, yeah, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> For the bonus material, <laughs> you got to come to these lectures. <laughs>